Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Dear Dietitian with special guest Lisa, Dr. Lisa. <laughs> I stuffed it up again and I did stuff up again, but I got it. So basically, I'm gonna ask you some questions, you're gonna give me answers. Mm -hmm. So can you take us through what it's like completing a PhD? So was it hard and do you feel it was worth it? Um uh, absolutely worth it. Um, one of the most fulfilling and best and challenging things I've done in my life. Uh, definitely, definitely worth it. What's it like completing it? You have to be very resilient. You have to be very um, self-motivated. You have to be able to work autonomously. There are ups and downs through every single day, week, month and year of it. But that's the that's the great reward of doing a PhD is being able to see yourself from um, the beginning through every single challenge and accomplish something that um, not a lot of people, not a lot of people have. You have to be willing to work on a project for a really long time and not see outcomes until, um, you know, months, years later, but definitely, definitely worth doing. What's the most challenging part of doing a PhD? Like you said, resilient, you need to be resilient. So what was kind of the biggest challenge that you faced? Mm, it's probably different for different people. I think one of the most challenging aspects of doing a PhD is um, getting constant feedback. Mm -hmm. So you get feedback all of the time on um, what you're writing, what you're producing. You might put a grant application in and get rejected. Um, so dealing with rejection, dealing with feedback is challenging. And I look at how I'm able to deal with feedback and rejection now versus, you know, four or five years ago. And um, I, I think that that's one of the most valuable things, albeit it was very challenging to get through because you take it really personally at the time when someone comments or feedbacks on something or you get rejected. But then being able to see that that, that rejection and that feedback is really just about improving the work product. Yeah, good. I think a lot of people struggle with receiving feedback and I don't know whether it's just, it, I'm sure it's most people, but dietitians in general yeah. tend to want to be perfect. Yep. Um, so we all kind of struggle with hearing the bad because we feel like, oh, that means we're shit. It's like, no, it's just how to improve to help you be better. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a process. And I think as, as you go through your journey as a clinician or a researcher, you have a responsibility to help the people underneath you to get better at dealing with feedback. And you can teach people how to get better at dealing with feedback. Um, but that's definitely a front of mind challenge through PhD is it's constantly um, from a net number of angles, um, getting rejected or receiving feedback. But that's the greatest joy then is being able to overcome that. Yeah. Yeah. So the reward at the end of the challenge. Yeah. Definitely. I know that you, when Peter and I answered a question from um, a viewer uh, who said, do you feel like it's worth doing an honours um, mm -hmm. in your undergrad? Peter and I both, like in terms of getting a job as a dietitian, Peter and I both said, nope, um, yeah. because we felt like if you're getting a job, it'll be like, it'll be a platform maybe to do a PhD or get a job in a hospital where you might want to do research there. Or if it's... Um, uh, yeah, like going to uni and do lecturing eventually, mm -hmm. but we didn't see the value in it in mm -hmm. terms of what, yeah. So what was your response to that? Yeah, I, I didn't agree with it at, um, <laughs> at all. Um, and I told you that yes. as well. Yeah. You didn't tell me exactly why, so I'll, I'll yeah. let you say it here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, look, I think if you haven't done... Maybe if you haven't done honours, like neither of you have done honours, or although Tyson, I would say you did research major with masters, which I is um, equivalent in a in a lot of cases. It's it's a little bit shorter um, in in some honours programs. The benefit of doing honours is the development of a skill set that you can't get in. Um, in not doing honours, exactly. I just talked about um, resilience, dealing with feedback. That is what you go through with doing honours. So you're developing skills in things that you wouldn't otherwise have been exposed to, whether that's dealing with feedback or whether that's collecting some kind of data collection or whether that's learning how to critically appraise evidence. That's only going to enhance your ability to be a clinician and read literature and be able to, to make um, 
you know, um, informed decisions about that literature. These are skills that you get to develop through doing honours. Yeah. You also get to um, persevere through difficult times. And as an employer, if I um, knew that um, someone had done honours, you can see that they have persevered through doing something that can be quite challenging. They've got to the end of it, they've produced something, um, they've got a diverse range of skills that may not be directly applicable, but, you know, being able to academically write, you can transfer that to being able to write, um, whether it's um, GP letters or um, general communications. I think the skills that you develop in doing honours are incredibly valuable. So that's part one. Part, <laughs> part two. one. Yeah, part two of my yeah. Part two of my response is that how do you know what you want to do? So I think that if you if you go, oh, honours is a waste of time, I'm not doing honours, in five years' time you go, man, I want to do research, but you didn't do honours, it makes it very, your pathway to then get back into it can be more difficult. So I think closing the door off and what saying, is your option? definitely. Yeah. So for some people, they know it's not what they want to do and that's fine and they're never going to want to open that door again. Yeah. But for some people, it's an opportunity to leave that door open like it did for me. I didn't go straight into research. I went, I worked for a few years and then went, oh, and I'm so glad I did research because now I've got what I need to be able to go back and do a PhD. Not even, it's not even about just going back and doing a PhD the opportunities to be involved in research, whether you, when you're working with particular health districts, um, local health districts, you know, they may have people who have PhDs, but as a dietitian, you, you may be able to contribute to a project by helping to collect data or helping to write part of a systematic review or um, generally doing an audit of service delivery. All of those skills that you did in an honours program are going to contribute to that. You don't have to make a career in research out of it, but I absolutely think that if it's something that you're interested in, it's definitely worth it. And for me, it is not about what letters are after your name um, or, or, or anything like that. It's about the skills that you have and being able to demonstrate in an interview if someone says, um, you know, um, describe a way that you've been able to, to demonstrate, you know, critical judgment or critical evaluation. And then you can talk about what you did in your honours project. Um, I think that it's very valuable. So there's my there's my passionate two cents worth about doing doing. Sounds good, like you know, valid, very valid points, and you know probably some that we would overlook slightly in terms of the resilient part. Like I think that's a really good thing and something that I think people in private practice need to, like based on my experience, they need to learn that resilience because a lot of the time what they thought was going to work for the client won't work, or they get a client that's just really difficult and like why won't you listen to me. And being yeah. resilient to that, but then also receiving the feedback from a senior practitioner saying, well, you could be doing this. Definitely. And take that on rather than just being so insular and it breaks. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's something that all of us need to get better at. Like, oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I have many, many, many levels of seniority above me. I'm an early career researcher and um, early career academic. And I get feedback on my own performance, how I'm still going. But the skills I've developed through doing research have given me the skills to be able to to deal with that but above that you know if you're working with a patient in private practice and what you're doing is not working what do I then do well I know I can go back to the literature and I know how to search for evidence and I know what to do I know we learn those general skills at university anyway but I think you can apply them in a little little bit of a um, more detailed way after doing honours yeah and I guess my perspective is probably a bit skewed because I've done the masters so I I think but the research part of the masters. So I think that some people have those similar skills and then I'm, cause it's so long ago now, it's just like, well, how much of the critical analysis of articles was I good at prior to doing the masters and yeah. then post, um, but doing the research part of the masters before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I particularly, like I said, I really like the, the personal kind of uh, resilience aspects less than the, the data collection and stuff because I feel like we do learn a bit, but I think that resilience and taking feedback and especially if it's continuous feedback is really valuable. So oh it's uh yeah, yeah it's Good. that that's the hardest part about doing um yeah. about doing research is learning how to do something you don't know how to do. Yes. So you know you're constantly getting told how to improve upon that. 